Hello, and this is Sunny. Welcome back. In my previous video, subnetting is simple. I used fixed length subnet mask subnetting or FLSM subnetting. In FLSM subnetting, all subnets are of equal size with the same subnet mask. The fixed length subnetting is easier, but this type of subnetting leads to inefficiencies and waste in terms of ID allocation and use. Today my topic is another way of subnetting, VLSM subnetting. VLSM stands for Variable Length Subnet Mask. In VLSM subnetting, we can get different sizes and different subnet masks for different networks. In VLSM subnetting, we can allocate a different minimum number of host IDs to meet each different network based on its size. The keyword is minimum. If one network has 100 devices, for example, the minimum number of host IDs is 128. And the subnet mask in CIDR notation is slash 25. If another network has 10 devices, the minimum number of host IDs is 16, and the subnet mask is slash 28. Very simple. In this video and the next two videos, I still use my Sunny subnetting table to solve VLSM subnetting questions. If you are not familiar with the Sunny subnet table, I suggest you watch Subnetting is Simple. I put the link below this video. If you already know this table, please continue. This question is similar to one of the CompTIA Network Plus simulation questions. Corporate headquarters provided your office a portion of their Class B subnet to use at a new office location, allocated the minimum number of addresses using CIDR notation needed to accommodate each department. Range giving. 172.30.232.0/24 HR 57 devices sales 100 devices IT 12 devices finance 25 devices After accommodating each department identify the unused portion of the subnet by responding to the question on the graphic all drop downs must be filled I put the question below this video. You can check the question at any time in the next several minutes. Now I move to the simulation part. There are five drop downs you can click on. You need to select a subnet mask inside a notation for each department or network. Now let's look at the given range 172.30.232.0/24. The given subnet mask is a slash 24, and you can use this sunny subnetting table. I got many questions about this table used in my video, Subnetting is Simple. I believe I didn't explain well when you can use this table. Thus, many people think it is a class C table and only works for class C ID subnetting. I want to clarify that this subnetting table can be used for subnetting any range with subnet masks from slash 24 to 30 in CIDR format or from 255.255.255.0 to 255.255.255.252 in decimal format. You can ignore slash 31 and slash 32 because there are not enough host ID for any network. Keep in mind, CIDR stands for classless interdomain routing. The keyword classless means forget about the classes A, B, or C. If you are giving a subnet of 10.10.10.10.10.10.10.10.10.10.10.10.10.10.10.10.10.10.10.10.10.10.10.10.10.10.10.10.10.10.10.10.10.10.10.10.10.10.10.10.10.10.10.10
23.0 slash 24 for subnetting, you can use this table simply because of CIDR value is slash 24. When you are giving a range of 172.30.232.0 slash 26, you can still use this subnetting table simply because of slash 26. The whole purpose of side notation is to break the class limitations. After all, the idea of different classes A, B, or C is very wasteful and stupid. To put it simply, if you see a subnet with CIDR values from slash 24 to slash 30, you can use this table. On the other hand, if you are giving a subnet with CIDR values from slash 8 to slash 23, you might think to use a different table as I did in my video class B ID subnetting. Fortunately, most subnetting questions involve slash 24. Thus, this table can solve most of the subnetting questions. Now, let me go back to the question and solve it with three simple steps. Step 1. Arrange the four departments in descending order in terms of the number of devices. Step 2. Find the minimum number of host IDs to meet each department. 128 can satisfy sales department with 100 devices. 64 can meet HR requirement with 57 devices and 32 can meet the finance department with 25 devices. And 16 can be good enough for IT with 12 devices. From the steps above, I find all subnet masks for these different networks, slash 25, slash 26, slash 27, and slash 28. Let me go back to the simulation page and select each subnet mask inside the notation for each network. Select slash 25 for sales department, select slash 26 for HR, select slash 27 for finance, and select slash 28 for IT. Step 3, or last step, solve the last question. Which of the following would represent the largest possible contiguous block of remaining address. Basically, this question asks to find the largest unused block of host IDs. Let me go back to the table again and do simple math. First, get the total IDs used for these four departments, 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16 equal 240. The total number of IDs in a given slash 24 block is 256. Thus, the number of remaining unused IDs is 256 minus 240 equals 16. Look at the table above. I find 16, which corresponds to slash 28. Therefore, the answer is slash 28. Now I go back to the simulation page again and select slash 28 for this question. I am done. In summary, VLSM subnetting is more efficient way of subnetting compared with FLSM subnetting. With VLSM subnetting, we can get the minimum number of host IDs to meet networks with different sizes. VLSM subnetting can be considered as subnetting a subnet. In my next video, I will demonstrate in detail how I use the same table to allocate a different block of IDs, different subnet masks to meet different network requirements of different sizes. Please stay tuned.